Guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. I am I, I am surviving off of cough drops and, and my my antibiotic alone. This past week has been rough, but I'm here to provide a great video for you guys. So let's get right into it. There were five quarterbacks selected in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, but it seems like there is one that has an entire fan base more excited than the others. Justin Fields. The Mitch Trubisky experiment didn't go as planned, and now the Bears are back to square one. With a dominant defense and offensive weapons littered throughout, Fields may be the missing piece that carries the Bears to a Super Bowl. But first, this video is brought to you by DraftKings. If you're like me and you're looking for somewhere to bet on your favorite team this NFL season, go check out DraftKings Sportsbook, where they have player props, live betting, and same game parlays, and more. Right now, DraftKings is giving new players a bonus of up to $1,000 for their first deposit. DraftKings, America's top rated sportsbook, is safe, secure, and reliable. And you can withdraw your money at any time for your convenience. If the sports book isn't available in your state, don't forget about DraftKings Fantasy, where they're offering millions of dollars in prizes every week. Every year, I like to make a bet on who I think is going to win the Super Bowl at the end of the year, and this year, I've already made mine, locking in the Kansas City Chiefs to take home their second title in three years. To start playing DraftKings today, go ahead and hit that link down in the description and use our code JDPROD when signing up. It's not a secret that the 2021 NFL Draft quarterback class is one of the more hyped up groups in a while, littered with talent throughout. But nearing the end of the preseason, there's a serious argument to be made that Justin Fields has had the best performance thus far. The training camp hype for Justin Fields was very real. He got to show off how powerful his arm is and his blazing speed to get Bears coaches and fans excited. But the most important thing was how he performed on the field, or how Fields performed on the field. Ha 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 ha, that's a funny. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Justin Fields definitely learned some lessons early in the preseason against the Dolphins. He didn't get off to a great start fumbling, nearly throwing a couple of interceptions, staring down his primary receiver, and not converting a first down for three straight drives. Tough challenges happen in the NFL. What matters is how you bounce back, and Fields did just that. He started to show a little bit more confidence and had his way with the Miami backups, scoring 17 straight points, including a rushing score and a touchdown pass to a very wide open Jesse James. Fields' second preseason appearance took a bit of a step back, however. He completed under half of his throws and made some questionable throws, but he was able to continue to flash his playmaking ability with his legs. The biggest thing with Fields this offseason has been his improvement over time. He looked very impressive in his third game. He stood tall in the pocket against pressure and, of course, wowed everyone with a crazy throw for six. The pocket collapsed fast and he escaped to the outside before delivering a very tight pass in coverage to Jesper Horstead. Now, it's no secret that Justin Fields didn't perform great in the first half of his first game and week two wasn't fantastic, but honestly, overall, I think he's been pretty great for what it's worth and I think his preseason performance alone is means to give him a starting shot. So far, a lot of what we saw from Fields at Ohio State has translated over pretty well. One of the biggest things that sticks out is his willingness to do whatever it takes for a play. Fields will escape the pocket, take a huge hit to get a pass off, or even rush ahead for tough yards. There are a lot of good mobile quarterbacks in the league, and Fields has been looked at as having the potential to be one of those. But his arm talent can't be understated. This dude has a great arm. He can throw side to side, put a ton of velocity into his passes, and make throws into tight windows. There is still going to be that constant concern with Justin Fields, mainly because of his Ohio State affiliation. But I don't think that fits here. We're talking about a guy who was the second best high school prospect behind only Trevor Lawrence before going on and playing at Georgia. 
The recent Dwayne Haskins debacle worries a lot of people, but I can assure you that Fields looks like a completely different player. Haskins struggled in his first training camp and dealt with behavioral issues. It's just not necessarily fair to put Fields under that same umbrella. I speak for a lot of Bears fans when I say that Justin Fields should absolutely start the season. Just watching the preseason, Fields has been really impressive. He brings another wrinkle to the offense that Andy Dalton can't, and that's his mobility. If the Bears do think they can go out and win this season, then I'd understand why Matt Nagy would lean towards Dalton. A veteran presence behind the pocket while Fields gets a little more time to learn could be beneficial. Chicago has a defense that may be one of the best in the league and has a lot of good offensive weapons that will benefit whoever is at quarterback. But there is one big reason to go with Dalton, that offensive line. If you think a guy is your future franchise quarterback, don't get him killed in his debut. If you haven't watched the Bears offensive line, it's about as stable as Olivia Rodrigo's dating life. <laughs> I mean, Justin Fields already got drilled in the preseason thanks to his line. Chicago has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Rams and what was the best defensive line in 2020, headed by Aaron Donald. There isn't necessarily a good time to have your rookie quarterback make his debut, but there definitely is a bad time, and that's when you're playing Aaron Donald. I wouldn't bet on the Bears being able to down the Rams in the season opener, but if Dalton does perform poorly to start the year, it's entirely reasonable to pull the trigger on fields. Chicago takes on Cincinnati in week two, a team with questions all over the field, and a quarterback who has only played in 10 career games. There is going to be some that say they need to hold off because of the Browns the following week, but you have to throw fields out there at some point. This isn't an Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes situation. You don't have an already great roster and longtime successful quarterback at the helm. Now, obviously, I don't think Justin Fields should play against the Rams, and it looks like he's not going to. But after that, I think it's pretty much open season for Justin Fields, and really, whenever they want to throw him in, they can. Now, yeah, he does have some adversity at some defenses that they're going to be playing later in the season, but Justin Fields needs to play eventually. He needs to get thrown in there and just bite the bullet and learn from those experiences and get better through playing. Now, if we're talking about in like perfect ideal time that I would think would be the ideal time, I would say week four against Detroit would be pretty well. I think pro football focus has their defense ranked in the 20s, and I think Justin Fields would ball out and that would really boost his confidence, but I wouldn't be shocked if we see Justin Fields come in before that. Besides, the Bears have to face plenty of good defensive lines all season, pretty spread out. After the Rams and Browns, you still have to see TJ Watt's Steelers, Nick Bosa's 49ers, and Arizona with JJ Watt and Chandler Jones. At some point, you have to not look for the perfect chance and just let Fields start, especially with two of his rookie counterparts already being named week one starters. Now, as of today, I would rank Justin Fields as the first or maybe second best rookie quarterback coming into this season. If he wasn't first, he'd probably be behind Mac Jones, and Zach Wilson has also made a pretty good case for him to be great. But regardless, I do think Justin Fields has the best potential going into the season right now. Lucky for him, unlike Mac Jones now, he's going to have some time to sit behind Andy Dalton, who's played in the league for a while, study the playbook, get some knowledge, and get more time to grow into more of a pro-ready passer by the time he does get his shot to start. I believe that Justin Fields is the perfect balance of talent and skill. He has a fantastic arm that can't be understated. The dude is a freaking lightning bolt. This man can run for miles around the defenders, and honestly, I think he's low-key the total package. I also feel like he showed that he could be pretty consistent as well, which is one of the biggest things you're always looking for in your starter. Just from his preseason debut alone, I see Justin Fields having an extremely promising future. The last time the Bears had a young rookie quarterback back, things didn't end up going according to plan. But Justin Fields just feels different. So far, I'd argue he's been the best of the five rookie passers and has his team's fan base more excited than ever. Matt Nagy and company have already done a good job tailoring plays to him this offseason and working with Fields' strengths. 
Obviously, they don't want him to have to stand tall against Aaron Donald in his first career start with that bad offensive line. But Fields is probably going to find himself starting for Chicago very, very fast. And I know Bears fans can't wait to see what the youngster has in store. Hey, thanks for sticking to the end of the video. If you want to subscribe to the channel, click right here. And if you don't want to, or you already do because you're freaking amazing, then click right here to watch another video. Also, follow us on TikTok for some cringy videos, Instagram for some random posts here and there, and also on Twitter because it's football season, baby, and you know we're going to have hella discussions over there. So again, thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. The dude is a f***ing light potty language.